Hi, this is Lindsay Skullcroft in Cradle of Filth, and you're watching Metal Wani. Greetings from Metal Wani. My name is Carl O'Rourke, and I'm here in London's Coco Theatre with Lindsay Schoolcraft of the legendary Cradle of Filth, who will be performing here later this evening. Welcome, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So, you're the newest member of Cradle of Filth so far, if I'm not mistaken. And I would like just, if you, for anybody that's not aware yet, how you got in with the guys and how that worked out. Yeah, it was, it was strange. Um, I was just back in Canada, I was minding my own business, and I was in university at the time. and. It was really, really strange. I got a message just before Christmas in 2012. And they were like, yeah, so we're looking for a girl who has a darker look, who can sing and play keyboards. And a, a, a recent keyboardist has, has left. And uh, we're going to have a big tour coming up, so we want to do it. And at the time, I was just I was really nervous. And I was like, oh my gosh, Cradle Phil, it's a huge name. So um, yeah, I sent in a demo tape, and it just it all went from there. It was, uh, it was Worthwhile quitting university, although my mother wasn't too impressed, but she's proud, so it, went, you know, it doesn't matter now. Got to do your own thing. Got yeah. to do your own. So, you're currently touring in support of the new album, uh, Hammer of the Witches, which was released in July, and it was the band's first album in three years, if I'm not mistaken. Something like that. Yeah, so I was wondering if you could tell us a bit not only about how the tour has been so far, but how you feel uh, your experience and response to the album has been so far. It's been Amazing, overwhelming, and good because we were so nervous. We um, we had a departure of our old two guitarists um, winter last year, and we were really nervous. We're like these two guitarists have been in the band forever, and we did a, a tour with um, Phillips, which was Ash Shop and Richard Shaw, and we we're like, okay, uh, you know, they we got along famously on tour. They became friends to us. We were actually really sad to see them go. Like I remember the night we said goodbye, there was a mass of tears. We we bonded over that month. And then when it was official that the old two guitarists were out, we brought them in and then we're like, okay, well, we're just gonna start writing an album together and see what happens. And leading up to that, it, we were so nervous. But at the end of it, we just had fun. We were like, you know what? Um, we're gonna do what we love, inspired by Old Cradle, doing what's best for the future of the band. And then it came out and the response has just been unbelievable. People have been singing along to the songs at shows in this small, this small portion of this UK tour and uh, lots of people showing up with vinyls to sign. And, it's just been amazing. It's just be great for you. It's your first album with the Yeah, guy. yeah, I'm very grateful for all of it. I can't believe it. It's kind of weird to look at the picture of myself in the album like that's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> so the tour is called the Inquisitional Torture Tour, uh, and it will see you return to some shores. Well, the Cradle of Filth returns to return to some shores. For instance, Dublin, uh, where they haven't been in quite a while. So I was wondering, do you know why there was such a long gap, and are they looking forward to returning to certain places that they haven't been in a while? Um, it just it, with, it comes with releasing new music. Once you have an album out, then you can go and kind of be like, what I did, and share it to the world. And yeah, we're trying to. We, we want to go everywhere. We want to hit up as many places as possible. So we are going to quite a few places. Uh, we have a show in Romania. I think it's sold out within. 72 hours or something. Awesome. So yeah. we had to move it to a bigger venue. Yeah, it, it, we haven't been to some places in so long, so the fact that we're getting to go back to those places, it's, it's really exciting. We want to obviously we'd go everywhere if we could all the time. Of course, and you might be hitting up the US possibly as well. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. coming January to March in 2016, so uh, there should be an announcement soon. It's been unfortunately postponed due to last minute details sifting around, but everyone's been waiting for it. We're really excited for it. We can't wait, especially the, we can't say that the bands that are coming to play with us are. Pretty amazing too. We're very stoked. Love it. Love it. Uh, so you guys, you've actually taken a pretty interesting t uh, like take on your support acts this time. I believe that you are, you know, bands to audition to support you guys in certain areas you've been. And I was just wondering where that idea came from. Or was it difficult to choose from so many, or was it easier than? You it was crazy because we got 400 submissions, and the five of the band members, we sifted through all of them, and it really it took our time. It took me an entire weekend to do it. That's all I did that weekend. Just sat in front of my computer and. <laughs> You know, we occasionally did laundry and ate. Um, there were so many submissions, but we we kind of welded it down to. Um, I'm sorry, welded it down to like uh, I don't know, ten per country, and then we went from there, and then we kind of let Danny and the label and the promoters have the final say. So it was cool. Um, I mean, we had Neil Blimiscaris with us um, from Australia, and from what I remember, we they opened for us three years ago in Melbourne, and they threw the same type of situation. The contest and Danny picked them, and then they're now on tour with us, and they've been they've been doing amazing since that day. They played with us, they got signed. So it's just kind of uh, giving other uh, support acts, like other acts, a chance because it's really I got a chance, and when you give someone a chance, that's when the magic happens. I think you need to give everything off. Where yourself, uh, so yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
And between November and February, uh, obviously you, you said you have dates coming up, but you're definitely booked for the 70,000 th 70, tons of metal yeah. for the cruise ship. And I was just wondering, because uh, not a lot of people would actually get to go to that, and no. I was wondering why so many bands get excited to do that cruise. Would this be your first time? Yeah, it's my first time. I've known about it for years, kind of like I've known about Falcon for years, and I didn't finally play it until this year. And uh, it's cool because it's like it's like a vacation and watching like in, in the middle of winter season, so you can go somewhere hot. There's it's a beautiful cruise ship, and uh, you get to see lots of your favorite metal bands perform, and just a big party. Really, so, so it's cool to get to hang out with the bands, and um, yeah, I have a lot of friends in bands playing it this year. So oh really, I'm really, really looking. Oh, what makes it different? Obviously, aside from being on a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean playing a metal show one after the other, but what makes that different? Why do people get so excited about it? Well, we, we, we end up in Jamaica, and I don't think a lot of bands get to play in Jamaica, so, so it's it kind of like a rarity. You're playing in the middle of like the Bermuda Triangle, fingers crossed, the fingers a wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a very different experience, and everyone uh, is always who's been on it is always like, I'm going again next year. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So. brilliant. Uh, so when it comes to the writing process and this far into the guy's career, uh, I was wondering, uh, have you, you know, did they, just sort of based on your experience so far, have you seen that they struggle to find new sources of inspiration or is it still coming to them very naturally? It, very naturally, um, especially with this band. I mean, we were all so excited. This was uh, Dan Firth, our bassist. This was his chance to give it a shot. He wrote quite a bit of guitar too. Um, and uh, he's actually not just our bassist. Uh, everyone was just so hungry and even, our drummer Martin had tons of songs he'd been working on the past three years, and he brought them forward. I said he'd written half of, like he had written half of the album. Yeah. Uh, no, we, we find so many sources of inspiration. I mean, we're all very different people, very different backgrounds. And Danny had no problem once the music was demoed. He brought out so many like beautiful stories and lyrics. And Even nearly 25 years in, he still. Yeah, he loves it. I mean, he's consistently reading, and he's into pop culture and movies and horror, and he never really loses uh, you know, that, that will and ambition to write an interesting story or just put for some really cool lyrics. So yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate it because I'm like, geez, when I turn 40, like I hope I still got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously they see something, so. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the, the band had started in 1991. The, the 25 year anniversary was actually just around the corner. Yeah. So obviously they've seen a lot of member changes, a lot of label changes. And I was wondering, just from, from being in it so far, what do you think the, you know, the success to their longevity has been because they've endured so much? You know, I think we've had this conversation a few times amongst us and sometimes people are needed and they come into the band and they're not there for the right reasons. Yeah, absolutely. It's about being um, in one way a family, but also doing, it's not about you, it's about what's best for the project. And some people don't understand that, or they can't grasp it, or they're there for a little bit, really want to move on to something else. Um, but I think it's just Danny's dedication to Cradle. It's his life, it's his fire, it's his everything, it's his baby. Yeah. Next to Luna, of course, he loves his daughter, Luna. Um, but uh, it, it Cradle both is his life, and I think because of that, he's kept it going. But we're hoping to keep this lineup as long as possible, because yeah. we, get a, we get along so well, we play together live so well. Joke around. There's no bad blood. There's no hard feelings. If there's a problem, you know, it's it's like a healthy family stuff. Yeah. But I'll bring it to the table, discuss it, admit you did wrong, do better, and that's rare. Though I mean, we're all on the same page, so yeah. when that happens, it's like rare. It's like, I think that's where a misconception comes into play. A lot of people would assume, due to so many members of labels, that there's a member in the band that's a problem. Maybe the member is actually trying to take care of the band, and they don't actually get to see that. that that's why yeah. so many. We were due for like a second or third book. Yeah. <laughs> Danny <laughs> left off with that first book. There's so much has happened since. I think the second book would be really nice to kind of tell the story now because it's pretty epic. I mean, you can't be too public about it. I don't want to get too far into the details, but it's, of course. it's been. A, it could be a movie. Yeah. That's how crazy it's been. Yeah. I love it. And finally, eleven studio albums spanning over two decades and more, uh, and worldwide success. It's exciting to imagine, but it might be a little early to say what is next for Cradle Field. Is there anything you can say, or are you guys just in the moment right now? Yeah, we, what we want to do in North America, we'd love to do a world tour. We do have some extra songs left over from the last album that we should consider reworking. We still have our writing partners within the band, and right now we just we're really focusing on making um, a really strong show, a live show getting back our performers, getting back all the live theatrics and just making it the best possible live show we can. Because in the, today's industry, yeah, you can put out albums and that's important, but the live show is where it all, it all has to be. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. No, totally.
top, you understand. But listen, thank you very much, Nancy, for taking the time here with us here today. Congratulations on the success of your first album, Incredible Vision. We wish you the very best of luck with the rest of the tour. Thank you so much. Thank you.